Hello there and here we are today and we're going to be talking about cleaning up your resin pieces. I promised somebody on the channel I would do a video with painting up uh, resin pieces using acrylic paint and I thought it was all ready to go but forgot that I need to clean up the resin pieces before we uh, start painting. There is another video on the channel but I thought I'd just film this as we go through and perhaps go into a little bit more detail and the other video was quite a long time ago so hopefully this will be a better quality video. So we've got a selection of resin pieces here and each piece is uh, casted in different types of uh, resin or a different type of resin. This is SG2000 and you see it's a uh, Stormtrooper Buddha and these figurines, these small figurines Gargoyle and Natsuki turtle dragon thingy. Uh, this was, these were casted in Easy Flow 60 quite a while back. So while I'm talking, there'll be, there'll be a video on the screen somewhere just going through the uh, process of um, what I was doing. Obviously, if it gets a little bit dusty, you want to wear a face mask. So first off, I use a Dremel like tool. Now then, I've got an attachment which you can see there, like a hose thing which connects into the main Dremel like tool. Now this isn't an actual Dremel as you can see. See this is a Terratech 135 watt mini grinder. I'm not promoting these, this is just what I found at the time. Um, this is when it's been quite reliable. And as you can see the hose is attached and then that attached to, attaches to our tool at the end. Now I like these for um, two reasons. One, you get, a, you get more flexibility and control over your tool and also because it's because it's away from the main tool it stops the your main tool actually getting clogged up with dust so um, probably improving its life expectancy or increasing its life expectancy keeping it clean and free from dust especially when you're working inside so that's the attachment there I was using to grind down the pieces that we didn't want on the resin pieces just to get the donkey work out of the way and then you want to go through hand files and a little bit of sandpaper to refine your pieces. So you used hand cutters also, wire cutters, just small wire cutters, these are quite handy. I use these for changing me um, strings on the guitar as well and cutting electronic cables and wires. So that's handy for getting your sprues out of the way cut any unwanted sprues away from your uh, resin pieces. So in case you don't know what a sprue is, that's what's left over when you create your vents in your moulds. So the, where the resin or whatever material you're using fills up the vents, that'll leave a sprue when you take the cast out of the mould. And then once you've used your Dremel light tool or your Dremel tool, um, just go through an assortment of files refine the cleaning up process a little bit more. I've got, I've got my favourite files, there are a selection of little files um, that you can go through and find those tricky to reach areas also with the smaller files. And then finally finish off with some sandpaper. Just got some wet and dry finishing paper here and I use the finest, the finest finishing or sandpaper in the pack. And I think that's around about a thousand grit, I think. I'm not quite sure, it doesn't say. But anyway, there's a fine, fine piece there. I think that's around about a thousand grit. So that'll give you a nice finish. And that's about it. You might have, uh, these. some of these casts didn't come out perfectly. Of course, uh, to get your casts as perfect as possible, you want to concentrate, obviously, on the casting process and some tools will help, like vacuum chambers and all that sort of thing I haven't got a vacuum chamber but uh, there's other ways by appropriate resins that uh, keep the bubbles down and all that sort of thing and um, you should be good to go but anyway sometimes you some of these casts they are a little bit substandard you could say but anyway we use these to um, do some painting demonstration videos which will be coming up soon but if you do want to fill some holes, then I would recommend using milliput. So mix your milliput together, obviously fill that into the holes, wait a night for it to go hard, and then go through the same process and sand the milliput down to match the resin. 
there is a video on the channel where we use milliput, um, but I might put another video up shortly using milliput as well. And just in case you don't know, milliput is like a resin putty which you just mix up in your hands. It's like sort of clay consistency. And you have two parts, you mix them together, that activates the chemical process to make it go hard. Fill in your holes or whatever you want to fill in and then wait about 24 hours and it goes very hard and it's just like resin. Well, it is resin really, but just a putty type of resin. So anyway, I think that's it. I think that's most things covered in this video for um, cleaning up your resin casts. Obviously spend as much time as you can to get a good finish. So what you put into your piece is what's gonna give you the end result. So if you rush it, it's not gonna be so good as if you'd spend your time going through the stages. I did this these relatively quick. And like I say, um, to avoid any filing down, you wanna think about your molding and the materials that you use when casting your resin pieces. But that's um, a topic for another day. So anyway, that's it for today. Um, see you soon and we'll get on and make these videos when we paint these up and uh, see you then. Thanks for watching. Hope this video helped and we'll see you soon.